Welcome everyone, back to your weekly weather updates, and in today's video, we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles, and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office precipitation and temperature. Now, for the last 10 days, we have been looking very much at the shorter term risks with, of course, the three named storms we had last week, and the wintriness we've had over the last few days, however, now we don't actually have much going on in the shorter term. The next five days, it's going to be reasonably quiet. I wouldn't say it's going to be, I wouldn't say nothing's going to be happening really in terms of the weather, but it's not going to be um, disruptive at all. There will be rain around, there will be some gustier winds, but I'm not expecting anything too significant. However, all eyes are now on to the start of meteorological spring. Now I know many of you watching this will have differing views of what you want to be seeing in March. I know many people would love to be seeing some nice sunny weather ready for some uh, growing in the garden, getting out there doing some gardening work, um, having some nice sunshine to enjoy uh, enjoy um, the weather. However, it does look like we will be going colder potentially and I know other people may enjoy that. There's continued signal now for seeing easterly winds throughout the first half of March. As we see with the models today, it is very much up in the air still, not guaranteed by any means, but there is a above average risk, let's just say, for, for it coming off. Uh, we're seeing a weakening of the stratospheric winds in the uh, high up in the atmosphere, which have been the main drivers of the westerly flow we've had recently. There's weakening of that in the next few days. So there is strong potential that we could be going colder for March. We could be seeing the coldest weather widely of the winter um, in, in early March, potentially. So we'll have a look at that in today's video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we just start by having a look at the latest from the GFS. You can see we're under a transient ridge of high pressure at the moment. Still got a bit of a colder air mass, so we're going to be seeing a few frosts around over the next few nights. However, as we progress through, you can see low pressure is trying to push in off the Atlantic, but we do have a Scandinavian high building. Now, it's not going to be pulling in bitterly cold air by any means, but it's just going to be halting the uh, Atlantic jet stream. But as we head to around day seven time, uh, or day five to day seven, so sort of middle of next week, we start to build in a proper high pressure system over the top and potentially to our northeast. But it keeps battling against low pressure out in the Atlantic towards the south of Greenland, um, trying to push in westerly winds, and this is trying to pull in more of an easterly flow. In this sort of scenario, we could be seeing sort of transient um, cold air masses coming through, um, bringing temperatures down to around average or below average overnight frosts but it still should be generally pretty decent under higher pressure but still very cold nights um, with those colder upper air conditions um, and of course we could see some stationary weather fronts you can see these milder and colder sectors out in the Atlantic if with those pushing up against the high pressure we could see uh, a stationary weather front potentially in the far west which could bring some heavier rain for some but those are really minute details that we'll have to firm up nearer the time if we see this pattern come off. Now, yesterday we were seeing bitterly cold easterly winds on the GFS in terms of actually seeing really strong easterly winds. Now, on this one, we never really quite get that coming off. We actually see the Atlantic starting to win out once again throughout the middle of this run. For right at the end, we start to build high pressure up once again towards Iceland and Scandinavia. And I would expect if we ran this on another couple of days, we would be starting to pull in pretty chilly easterly winds. You can see a bit of warm air infection, pumping more air, warm air into the North Atlantic. And that would help build this higher pressure blocking system that would start to bring in north to northeasterly uh, or just straight easterly winds. So you can see on this latest GFS, it doesn't quite go as cold as it did, did yesterday. Not as much of a direct easterly wind, but it still shows that general high pressure pattern over the top and to our north and northeast. Um, just not quite getting those easterly winds off on this run. So it does still look encouraging that things are going to be settling down definitely doesn't look like high pressure is going to take more of an influence which um regardless of what it delivers whether it's easterly winds or just generally an easterly or, or just sort of stationary flow it's going to dry things up um for many i wouldn't say definitely for the west because we will of course see the atlantic systems trying to push in but definitely for the east and most likely the south as well things would be turning drier but if we did start to get an easterly wind in then we could see more wintry hazards with that. So still things are up in the air, but definitely doesn't look like it's going to be an absolute westerly fest like we've had the last couple of weeks. Definitely doesn't look like there's going to be a pattern change, which could um, be a precursor to easterly winds come 
uh, sort of the first couple of weeks of March. Now, if we do have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Now, it only goes out to day 10, so it only goes into the first week of March. But we'll see a similar sort of pattern with high pressure taking control, trying to pull in an easterly wind. And right towards day 10, you can see we're trying to ridge that up to uh, the north, towards Scandinavia. And as I said, even if this doesn't pull in an easterly wind, it will be going much drier and more settled and probably bringing colder overnight conditions. And if we sit to see the high pressure position sufficiently to our east, we could start to pull up a southerly wind. And if we did start start to pull up a southerly wind, we could see very mild conditions, maybe getting into the mid to high teens. The models are not showing that at the moment, but that is still a potential scenario, and we'd only need a slight uh, shift in the positioning of the high and the low pressure systems to be getting those southerly winds. At the moment, though, definitely more of a north to easterly flow is sort of, sort of favoured within the models, but you couldn't rule out maybe seeing some warm weather. Remember, sort of March, April time, we do have sort of the biggest contrast. We still have a lot of cold air to our north, but we have building warmth to our south. So we can very quickly go from very cold conditions in from the north and the east to very warm or mild conditions in from the south. We could be seeing days of 15, 16, 17 degrees, and we can be seeing days of 2, 3, 4 degrees with snow. So there could be big, big differences, uh, big, big changes coming up in March, and we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. Now, if you have a look at the ECMWF run, now today this actually probably goes the coldest of the runs. And if we do move it through, you can see high pressure trying to build up to our north and east, trying to settle things down, especially further south and eastwards. We see this big high trying to build up over the top. But as I said, low pressure in off the Atlantic still trying to push through. And right towards day 10, we actually start to pull in a pretty chilly easterly wind. Now, the high pressure doesn't get quite far north enough to tap into this real cold air mass over Scandinavia and Russia. But it does pull in a sufficiently cold air mass that would give some wintry hazards cold temperatures in the day um and potentially so even some snow with that with, a, with an upper level trough there just over northern france so it's not a classic sort of easterly wind in terms of really being really cold but it would produce some wintry hazards and if we did get the high pressure continued going you can see this cold air is getting dragged into europe and if we did hold this high pressure on for another few days i would expect that cold air to be dragged towards the uk uh, getting sort of reinforcements for the colder air so ECWF definitely going for more of the bullish colder run today um, that would uh, yeah would tend things pretty chilly indeed for the first week of March but of course we'll have to see how things play out by no means am I saying this is going to be any anything like a beast in the east there's no chance of that at this stage but turning things colder uh, de definitely is a possibility and if you do look at the upper air temperatures uh just the upper air temperature deviations you can see around four to six degrees below average if it was a beast from the east type levels we'd be seeing 10 to 12 degrees below average so no beast from the east coming up whenever anyone says uh sometimes some people think easterly winds means a beast from the east guaranteed doesn't beast from the east is like the most extreme end of an easterly wind we can get easterly winds in winter that don't produce snow at all um we saw that last year uh, even if the upper air temperatures are cold enough dew points and stuff like that can be an issue um, depending on the, the origin uh, origin of the air um this would definitely would be cold enough but it's not going to be anything extreme by any means just probably a shock if it did come off considering the mild winter we have had so far now if we do look at the gfs ensembles um, you can see there is support for colder air masses throughout the middle of March, or early March, sorry. Um, but it's not guaranteed. At the moment, we've still got quite a chilly air mass, and I said frosts over the next couple of nights. Form temperatures are generally above average to end February and start March. However, as we head towards the 3rd, 4th of March, you can see precipitation signal decreases. That's high pressure building up over the top of the UK and to our north and east. And then you see those temperatures dip a couple of degrees below average. But there is a lot, and I mean a lot of spread. Some going down to 10, 12 degrees uh, below freezing at 850 HPA, which is cold. Now remember, beast in the east got down to, depending on where you were in the country, between minus 15 and minus 20 degrees at 850 HPA. So nowhere near on that level, a good 5 to 10 degrees um, milder than that. But it still would be cold. It would give temperatures around 2, 3 degrees in the day, and probably well below freezing overnight, and things falling out of the sky would be wintry uh, and probably most likely snow but that is only maybe a third of ensemble members getting down so that's at sort of minus six to minus 10 degree level quite a few others are staying around or slightly below average so the gfs operational run there doesn't go particularly cold in that area 
that's where the ECMDF run does go cold, and you can see some are going milder. Definitely a trend of colder conditions, but not guaranteed. And beyond that, it generally returns to average as we see a lot of milder ensemble members appear, but still having quite a few colder ensemble members. Still decreased precipitation signal, um, and that does mean um, high pressure definitely will likely be in control. Now, interestingly, if we have a look at Glasgow, you'll see not as much of a colder trend. And the reason for that, as we saw with the Eastern UEF run, is that position of the high pressure system is over northern Scotland. The coldest air will actually be dragged into the south. So this could be one of the scenarios where the north just stays generally average uh, with dry conditions, and the south does go quite, uh, quite I wouldn't say unsettled, but showery. Um, and very cold indeed. So we could be seeing that scenario come off, but of course we'll have to keep an eye on the exact air masses um, and directions. As you can see in Glasgow, there's no real big signal of anything particularly cold, um, but that's because it's further northwards and most likely under the centre of the high, which isn't dragging in that bitterly cold air. So we'll have to see exactly how it does play out, but at this stage um, there is a, a lot of uncertainty, let's just say. If we do have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, and see how those do, do compare. You can see, again, they are pretty cold. Uh, cold at the moment, then goes well above average to end February and start March. And then around 3rd, 4th of March, you see quite a few are going much, much colder, including the operational run. Now, the operational run is on the colder end of the spectrum, but it's no, by no means an outlier. There's quite a few going as cold, if not much colder. Um, but, of course, there are over 50 ensemble runs here. So, you're going to be getting all the extreme scenarios. You get some in the longer term, going down to minus 12, minus 14 degrees at 50 HPA which is not even a beast from the East sort of pattern, but would be bitterly cold, um, sort of a level down from the 2018 beast from the East. That would be really cold, but it's on the right cold end of the spectrum. The coldest runs are generally, that I think, possible, would probably be down to the minus 10 line, minus 8 to minus 10 line in from the East, which would be very cold, low two points, snow would be falling out of the sky. Um, but yeah, a general cold, colder trend around the 5th, 6th of March, before it returns to around average. So very similar to the GFS opera, uh, ensembles, and uh, we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. But at this stage, I wouldn't bank on it, but I would say there is probably a decent chance that we do see something colder. But whether it is cold enough to produce a lot of snow showers, or whether it's just a cold and frosty pattern, that is what we've got to decipher over the next sort of week or so. So if you finish up, have a look at the UK Met Office run. Now this uh, has been quite a, a staple of the runs uh, of, of the videos recently, as it's been very important with the short the short term risks we've been having. But doesn't look like there's much coming up over the next five days, as I said. Now you can see at the moment not too many showers around, but over the course of this evening we're going to be seeing weather front push into northern Scotland, but a bit of snow over high ground and rain elsewhere. Beyond that, just cloudy really through Saturday morning. A few showers trying to push in from the west with a weather front, and eventually it does make progress, but it does fizzle away through Sunday afternoon. So for many in the east and the south especially, it's going to be a very dry weekend, uh, and some areas even further northwards and westwards could see a dry weekend as well. Cloudy, but likely to be pretty dry. Then we do see a weather front that does start to make its way through, and that could be bringing quite a lot of heavy rain through Monday. So return to rain on Monday before things turn a little bit drier, but you can see a bit low pressure and the weather fronts get stuck in the south through Wednesday, and we do see some very heavy rain potentially along the south coast. Again, five days away, so things can change, the positioning can change, but it looking potentially wet there. So definitely some more rain coming up over the next five days, but by no means a washout, and for those areas that have got flood warnings at the moment, hopefully this sort of lull should let those waters subside a bit. Now, if you have a look at max temperatures, you see early this morning temperatures were pretty chilly, around 3, 4 degrees. And over the course of this afternoon, temperatures are going to rise. Oh, they did rise to around 8, 9, 10 degrees. Over the course of this evening, we're going to see a frost in the far southeast as we have a cold air mass and clear skies. But further westwards, a milder air mass is pushing in. And by Saturday afternoon, pleasant, 9, 10 degrees around or slightly above average. For Saturday evening, temperatures are going to drop away to around low single digits again. There'll be a frost in a few spots. And Sunday in the day, between 7 to 10 degrees, a bit colder in the north, of course. Every Sunday evening, as early as Monday, still chilly overnight conditions, but nothing too cold in the south. 11, 12 degrees on Monday, but a cold air mass is spreading in from the northwest. By Tuesday, all areas are going to be around 5 to 8 degrees. Some areas even a little bit colder than that, which is generally around or slightly below average. And we're going to still see some overnight frost, especially further north, it's in those colder air masses. Um, so yeah, does still look like chillier nights are coming up, but in the day, it doesn't look like it's going to be bitterly cold by any means. Still going to be on the chillier side, especially further northwards, uh, but nothing really too exceptional. But we've got to keep 
our eyes on March, see what happens with the high pressure and whether it does deliver anything colder uh, in terms of easterly winds. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.